as of this video, part one and part two of my 350Z, 2JZ swap series are out. If you've been watching, you'll know that one of my goals for this series is to cover all the steps, parts, costs, and headaches associated with the swap. Unfortunately, I had to leave a lot of details at a part two to save time while assembling the short block. So in order to cover all the lost information, I'm making shorter videos about all the stuff that got cut out. This video is all about the main bearings and thrust washers. Hope you enjoy. All right, so here I've got my old main bearings. I left the top ones in the main bearing caps, and then I took the uh, ones that go in the block themselves out. And I did not mean to punt that into next year. You can see they're a little shiny. I mean, these have worn okay, it looks like. I made a little scratch right there on that one. There was some differences in the texture on the bearing. You can see on the left side of that, it's very shiny and smooth. And then towards the top and the right side of this bearing, it's uniform. Form. In the last video, I was taking tolerances of all these, and they were a little bit out of spec, so I decided the best course of action would be to replace them. You can see that this one's shiny there. It's got some scuffs in it. Shiny on the edges, but not in the center. Same here. This one actually looks pretty good. That's kind of what I was hoping they would look like all the way around. A little bit of wear on the right side under that six, but still pretty dang good. And then this one is completely worn on the far side over here. It's almost reflective. And then it's got a big gouge in it right there, just behind this finger. And then coming over here to the ones on the caps, you can see right here in the center of this one, it's very, very shiny. And then it's uniform, kind of satin colored there. This one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. This one's worn a little bit on the edge here. I guess this one does have a little bit there. This one is completely shiny in the center right here. This one's pretty uniform. And then this one is very shiny right here. And then it kind of blends into a more satin color there. Since these looked iffy, I decided it's best just to replace all of them. You can't really just do half of them anyways unless you split a new set apart. But I went ahead and got completely different bearings entirely. So these are the new bearings. I got King High Performance Racing Bearings. They're not necessarily a strictly racing bearing, but these um, had a lot of features to them that I thought would benefit what I'm doing to my motor. I mean, I'm turbocharging the motor. These are bearings from a GE. I don't think they're any different than the ones from the GTE from factory, but I still feel like it's better to do a small upgrade just in case. Since I am going to be putting boost through that thing, I want something that can handle it and will last a little longer. So I'm going to go ahead and open these up. Cool thing about this is that it labels all of them from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for all the bearings. This is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. But the big thing about these that I liked and that I really wanted was the fact that they had the T-Max coat, which is King's special coating. Um, it's resistant to wear, so these should last longer, ultimately take more of a beating for a lot longer of time. So that's why I opted for these. And that is why they are black and not shiny silver. I think they've also pretty much got the exact same design with the exception of little pins at the back. A little stub there. I guess it's identical on these, but I think their rod bearings are different. So on the King Racing website, it says to clean the back of these off with the solvent. So I'm gonna get some cleaner, nice rag, and I'll wipe off the backside, and probably with the same uh, lint-free rag I was using earlier. The solvent I'm gonna be using is this 3919 Chromax. It's a cleaning solvent. I don't really wanna use brake clean on these because I don't know if it'll mess up the coating on the back. And in the case that it does mess up the coating on the back, the last thing I wanna do is accidentally slip and mess up the coating on the front. So I'm gonna be using just a standard cleaning solvent instead. Now that all of these are clean, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the old bearings from main caps, and then I'll just go ahead and insert all these into the proper spots. So the old bearings still have a little bit of oil to the back of them. So as I'm taking them out, I'm just gonna go ahead and give the uh, cap itself a quick wipe, get all the oil out from below where the bearing was. Once it's nice and clean, there's no debris, no oil left. I'll take the bearing that goes to the main cap. This is cap number one. So it's gonna get the thicker bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and line up the pin, gently press it down, make sure that the uh, bearing is even with the tops on both sides of the main cap, and then it is installed. And I'm just going to keep repeating that process for the rest of the cap, so I'll do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one. 
All right, so I got all the new bearings for the main caps put in there already. So the next thing to do is just to put all these in. These are for the uh, block itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and put those in. Next up after the bearings is the thrust washers. These don't have the P-Max coat. Let's go ahead and open them and show you real quick. These are gonna be the same color as any standard bearing. So they're not anything special, but they are still King brand because I wanted to you know, keep all the bearings uniform. So there's two different kinds of these. There's this one with the little tab at the top, and then there's one that's completely flat all the way across the top of the curve. So these go down into the block. There's no tab down here or anything for these to hook into. These actually attach to the main cap. So when installing these, the most important thing to remember um, is that the grooves right here and right here need to be facing outward. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that into place. Hopefully it's not gonna fall out. It fell out. But before I put these in, these are going to have trouble staying in here. They don't really have anything to hold them in place other than a groove down there. And so if you accidentally hit it, it will fall out and then it might fall down the cylinder hole. So I'm going to be using some of my assembly gel. I got some Driven GP1 assembly gel. Chose this because I knew it wasn't going to leak it down the inside of the block or anything while it was sitting here in the garage. So I'm going to put some of this in the back of the thrust washer and then I'm going to use that to stick it to there and then it should keep it from falling off while I'm assembling everything. Putting as thin of a layer as possible because I don't want to lubricate this, I just want to make it sticky. That should keep it from wanting to pop off of there. If I accidentally bump it, make sure the outside surface of this has some as well, because that is gonna be touching rotating parts, and it'll go ahead and do the other side. All right, so again, I'm gonna smear a little bit of this on the back side, get it to stick down in there. And I'm gonna get a little bit more and wipe it on the front surface, lubricate that, and that should be all good. Now next, I'm just gonna wipe some uh, assembly lube across each of the bearings in here. Obviously, I wanna lubricate those because there's gonna be a crankshaft spinning on those at initial startup, and I don't wanna ruin the crankshaft or spin a bearing or anything because they're too dry. So as you can tell, a lot of the little details that were in this video weren't included in the longer one. Obviously, I couldn't insert 10 minutes of me talking about the bearings and all the little steps that I was doing if I wanted to put the whole short block into one video. So yeah, that's what this one was for, is just to cover all those little steps like the solvent, putting the lube on, all that good stuff. And if you guys are enjoying the content, you might as well go ahead and share it with some of your friends if they're interested as well. It'll help my channel grow. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you wanna see more, hit the notification bell. If you'd like to be notified when the next video comes out, that's it for this one. Go out there and make the rest of your day a great day. Peace out, see you in the next one.